Hello and praise the Lord, all of you people. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will be glad and rejoice in it. We are grateful unto God and we will bless the name of the Lord because God has been faithful and true. Uh, for another day, God has kept us. God has brought us over a way that with tears has been watered. Uh, God has given us all that we need. And we have another opportunity to be in the land of the living and to lift up the name of our God. And so on this day, at this moment, wherever you may be, whatever time of the day it is, whatever day of the week it is, when you access this worship and word experience, I pray that you would have a heart lifted up unto God, uh, knowing that God has been faithful to us. And because God is a good God, because God is worthy to be praised, we're going to take this opportunity to lift up the name of our Lord. It's Pentecost Sunday as I'm recording this. It's the day uh, on which the Holy Spirit descends on the church in such a way that the whole world is able to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ go forth with power and conviction. And so on this day, as we celebrate the triumph of God's word over the world, as we celebrate the triumph that God's word goes forth and every nation and tongue is able to hear it, as we celebrate that, let us lift up our hearts unto God, for God is worthy to to be praised. Come on, let's sing right now together, declaring wherever you may be, I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today, because you care for me in such a special way. Let's sing together. I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today, because you care for me in such a special way and so i praise you i lift you up and i magnify your name oh that's why my heart is filled with praise wherever you are come on and sing it if you don't know it well just hum along i love you I love you, I love you, Lord, today, because you care for me. Come on, help me lift up the name in such a special way. And so I praise you, I lift you up, and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Come on, let's sing that together one more time. It's simple. I love you, Lord. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you care for me. In such a special way, and so I praise you, I lift you up, and I magnify your name. Yes, God, that's why my heart is filled with praise. So we declare, my heart, my mind, my heart. My mind, my soul belongs to you. Ooh, you pay the price for me. Way back on Calvary, and so I praise you. I lift you up, and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. That's why, Lord, that's why my heart is filled with praise. Every part of me says hallelujah, yeah. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Last time all together. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, my heart is filled with praise for you. God, you're worthy of the glory and the honor. It all belongs to you, oh God. And so we come to neglect uh, the things that 
cause us pain. We come to lay down the things that take us away from you. We come to jettison the bad uh, theologies and the bad uh, thinking and the bad uh, uh, philosophies that have caused us to turn away from your truth. And God, we ask God that you'd allow us to pick up your truth. Let's go to God in prayer. God, we ask right now that the fire of the Holy Spirit will burn away the chaff in our souls, God. Allow us, God, to see past the lack and the loss. God, allow us to see past the lies and the uncertainty. God, allow us to see past those things, God, that desire to creep in and to steal us away from our hope and our peace. God, I pray that you would allow us to be, re be reminded clearly that we have been called to preach and teach the love and the truth of Jesus Christ. Remind us, God, that your word tells us, God, that we are to love, but to also walk in truth. Remind us, oh God, that your word tells us that we have been empowered to go out and to change the whole world. Remind us, God, uh, that you have called us to stand for righteousness as the prophets of old. Remind Remind us, God, that sin is a reproach, God. Remind us that injustice is a reproach, God. Remind us that your heart beats for the poor and the oppressed. Remind us, God, that you are on the side, God, of those who are dogged out by society and systemic evil. Remind us, God, that our part is with you in the world. God, remind us that we are called to be on mission, marching forward, declaring the truth of God. Love, God, light, but also truth, God. Father, help us to be people who are instruments of peace, God, but also voices, God, of truth and reason, speaking truth to power. Allow the Holy Spirit to embolden us, God, so that we're able to go forth in the world, God, and be like those original apostles, God, who preached the word of God and who said we ought to obey God and not man. Allow us to be like those who declared your truth even when it was inconvenient and even when the whole world wanted to hear the lie. God, allow us to stand in the street, God, and declare your truth. Everything we are, allow it, God, to reflect your spirit. Let your church arise in this hour as never before. Let us be your hands and feet. God, teach us to war the way you would have us to war in the spirit realm. Teach us, God, to tell the truths you would have us to teach, to tell. God, allow us, Father, to be an example to the world of the truth of God on march and on parade. We thank you on this Pentecost Sunday for the empowering power of the Spirit's presence, which leaps divisions and breaks down walls and barriers which causes us to tell the truth and, and all tongues and all nations and all ethnos are able to hear it. God, allow your word to reverberate God today. I pray that you remove me behind the cross. It be no longer I, but when God, the preaching comes forth, I pray God that it be your word reinforced by your spirit and that it accomplish your purpose in your people. All these things we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the precious Holy Spirit. Have your way, oh God. Have your way in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, 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 hallelujah. All right, this time in our service together, let's turn our attention to the words of scripture. Uh, we never want to uh, worship God without acknowledging the power and the presence of God right here in the room, particularly through the written word. And so let's turn our attention to the scriptures, to the book of John chapter 20. That's again, the New Testament book, the gospel of John chapter 20. And let's look at particularly uh, verses 19 to 23. And the scripture reads this way, it says, On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Now, after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And he said, if you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. But if you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. What power we have from the word of God. That concludes the reading of John chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. Uh, and a reminder on this Pentecost Sunday that uh, God not only gave us in the person of Jesus Christ, not only sent us the Holy Spirit as a comforter, but also sent us peace, peace that passes all understanding. And so just as we commemorate the coming of the Spirit uh, on this day, we also commemorate the peace God has given us, peace that is not that which the world gives and that which the world cannot take away. Let peace guard you every moment of every day. And also remember the power we've been given. Hmm, scripture says, if you do not forgive someone's sins, they are not forgiven 
And if we do forgive, their sins are forgiven. Let us never forget the power God has vested in the church to be God's uh, 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 organism, God's body, God's institution in the world, seeking and saving the lost and telling the truth and holding the truth up for the world to see uh, what power and what responsibility we receive from the word of God. With that, let's turn our attention now to the ways in which God calls us to be on task and on mission in the world. A part of the responsibility God gives us is God calls us to be active stewards of all those things God gives us. And so at this uh, portion of our service, as we look at announcements, let us acknowledge the ways that God blesses and uses us uh, and the ways that we're allowing ourselves to be God's hands and feet in the world. Receive now the announcements. Good morning, community, and welcome to online worship. Now prepare for the week's announcements as we acknowledge God on the move in our midst and how God is inviting us to serve God throughout the world. Join us every Sunday again at 1030 a.m. And if you can't watch right away, you can watch throughout the week. This Wednesday at 6 o'clock p.m., our virtual Bible study will take place on the Zoom platform. If you do not have the login information, please reach out to Pastor Speller so that you'll be able to be able to, to join in with us in studying and seeing one another virtually as we continue to go deeper into the Word of God. 6 o'clock on Wednesday night, reach out with an email to Ray underscore Speller at Yahoo for more details. If throughout the week you're looking for ways to connect and be encouraged, please make sure to go and check out our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. There are videos put up every week, sermon videos, Bible study videos, inspirational check-ins from Pastor Speller, all kinds of material to strengthen you and keep you uh, encouraged and informed as we continue to go through this walk together. So make sure to go to our Facebook page and our YouTube page, like, share, and continue to subscribe to get new information as it comes forward. We know it's very important to continue to give unto God's work. And so uh, I ask that you consider, if you have not done so, uh, maybe going to the Google uh, Play Store or the App Store and downloading the Givelify app. If you're looking for a new way to be able to give to God's uh, work, uh, download Givelify and search on the Givelify app for Community Congregational United Church of Christ. And this will allow you uh, through just a few strokes of your phone and texting to be able to give to God's work quickly and regularly. You can set of automatic payment so that you can pay your tithes without any hassle month after month. Also, of course, every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we have our 12 noon prayer, scripture, and encouragement call. It's 12 o'clock Central Standard Time. We gather together for a time of encouragement in the word. Uh, the login information is on the flyer that's showing right now. Also, the login information is on our website uh, homepage as well as on the Facebook page. And you should be getting an email regularly that shows you the dial-in information. Amen. We are so grateful to be able to mark the ways that God is using us faithfully on mission and on purpose in our community and in the wider world for God's work. Uh, as we acknowledge those announcements that have gone forth uh, this week and in previous weeks, I want to add some special announcements that I'm sure will bless you. Uh, our youth ministry has been hard at work, and so they I wanted to make sure that we shared the word this week of a few things that are coming up a little later on. First of all, of course, on first Sunday, we'll have our next virtual Breakfast with God session, and the Breakfast with God sessions begin, I want to say, at 9.45 sharp on first Sunday mornings via Zoom. If you have not been able to participate or have young people who have not been able rather to participate in the Breakfast with God uh, on this last Sunday, first Sunday and the first Sunday before, please make sure you reach out to Sister Margot Thomas or Sister Virginia Bell who will be able to give the information to be able to participate. It is a Zoom uh, experience and the young people are able to see one another. Talk last week, they talked last month, rather they talked about prayer and what it looks like to seek God in prayer and they'll continue to learn about the truth of God and loving one another and loving God's world. Uh, this first Sunday, again on Zoom. We're so excited about that. Of course, also our Sunday school is in full effect. Every Sunday morning at 9.15 a.m., our adult Sunday school gathers together for the adult lesson on Zoom. That's again 9.15 a.m. on Zoom. I uh, Make sure that you are connected to the church and you're getting the church emails. If you're not getting the church emails and you want information about these sessions throughout uh, the week, please make sure uh, to inbox us here on the Facebook page or on the YouTube page. Also, 
uh, reach out to me, Pastor Speller. Give me a call or an email. If you don't have my email address, you can reach me at Ray underscore Speller at Yahoo.com. That's R-A-Y underscore Speller at Yahoo.com to get linked into those things so that you're able to be there for 915 Sunday School and uh, for uh, the Breakfast with God lessons on first Sundays. Also, of course, our virtual worship is up every Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. Uh, we put the video up at 1030 a.m. on both our Facebook uh, page as well as our YouTube channel. Uh, and so make sure every Sunday you're able uh, to be able to receive the word of God uh, right where you are. And we're able uh, to be together in community, though we're separated virtually. Uh, we can click on together at 1030. And at the same time, we can amen and shout and enjoy the word and share the love of God with one another through the word and worship experience. Also, during the week, we have our prayer, scripture, and encouragement calls that happen every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 12 o'clock noon Central Time. Uh, the call-in conference information uh, is floating around. It's in various flyers here on the Facebook page. It's also uh, information uh, is also on the uh, the church website. Uh, also, again, if you get the emails, you'll receive that in the in the the regular emails that we receive. Uh, and I try to send out also text uh, the day before for a few of these things to make sure that those who are linked in uh, know uh, when we're about to have our Bible study, when we're about to have our Sunday school. So please make sure that you link in in those ways to be encouraged and strengthened by the word of God. Lastly, uh, by way of our weekly uh, participation, we also have Wednesday night Bible study uh, virtually on Zoom as well at 6 o'clock p.m. every Wednesday. And the conversation is phenomenal. The time we have together looking at the book of Exodus, the exclamation and the prophecy and the encouragement we receive is unbelievable. God is truly working. So uh, please, please avail yourselves of these opportunities. I cannot say enough. If you feel disconnected, there's no reason to feel disconnected. Uh, we have more opportunities to connect with one another now than we did when we were gathering physically. Amen. I'm going to run them down again. You got Sunday school. You got breakfast with God. You got morning worship. We've got prayer call every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We got Wednesday night Bible study, working on a cooking with Christ experience where we're able to share together recipes uh, in a way that's going to be fun and allow us to share together with one another. We're working on some community service outreach projects that are going to touch seniors, not only our seniors who are members of our church, but seniors at a local nursing home. Uh, we are really trying to be on the move for God. And I pray that you would stay connected and continue to give to God's work so that it might go forth with power. Amen. Uh, with that, we also want to acknowledge some of our special outreach work that we're doing. Please don't think that the Church of Jesus Christ is taking a break. Uh, we did spend some time recalibrating, making sure that we were doing everything well and safely, but we are still on mission. People still have needs, and we are still the hands and feet of Jesus. And so every month, every month, uh, the Espresso of Love, a diaper uh, bank still has diaper drives. Uh, I believe, I want to say the third Wednesday of each month, they still have diaper drives and 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 tens and sometimes uh, uh, dozens or scores rather of uh, folks are receiving diapers, wipes, and other uh, needs uh, for their families every month. Also, uh, our food ministry uh, has shifted gears. We've been uh, on hiatus from our usual food pantry work for the last three months, but uh, beginning this coming Thursday, we will actually be distributing food boxes uh, on Thursday. This coming Thursday at 1:30 p.m., we'll be able to distribute food boxes to those in need. Uh, we're going to have approximately 100 food boxes, which feed each four folks in a family. So we're able to feed up to around 400 people. Uh, and those food boxes, again, will be given out at the church uh, outside the ed education building uh, on this coming Thursday. Uh, for those who may be concerned about safety, one of the things we're doing is the boxes are being put together off-site by people who are doing this for the entire, for folks all around the state. It's being transported here to Montgomery from Tuskegee. Uh, it's them being unloaded. And literally, our volunteers from the church are simply taking the boxes and placing them into people's trunks. There will be no touching of hands. Nobody will be inside of the building. We're going to do it safely, but we're also not going to neglect to bless the people of God. Is that all right? That we continue doing God's work in God's kingdom. I pray if you're able uh, to be somebody who helps with something as simple as maybe lifting boxes and putting them into trunks, please reach out to Deacon Ellis Hooper. Uh, if you can't help in that way and you uh, want to be able to be a blessing, but you have uh, some issues as many of us have with uh, comorbidities and things 
things that cause us to be a little nervous about going out. Can I, can I tell you, prayer helps as well. If you can pray for the mission and pray for the work of God to go forth, I promise you God hears prayer and God honors prayer. So if you can pray for these things, if you can't participate, make sure you pray. Amen. Make sure you pray. Also, for those who desire to do so, there's always a uh, physically giving so you can participate. You can give uh, through prayer and also you can give financially and fiscally. Uh, if you are so moved, we pray that you continue uh, to give unto the work of God. Our work continues on. Our needs continue on. And so we're continuing to do God's work and it takes resources. As stewards, we're called to give faithfully to God's people. And so I pray uh, that you continue to do so. I am so glad and grateful and overwhelmed by the number of our members and friends who continuously, faithfully give to God's work. It has been a blessing to see the people of God rise to the occasion and bless uh, the work of God. Uh, we're still, of course, always in need uh, of more gifts to be able to continue to expand. Uh, we want to continue to give more food. We want to continue to be able to bless more people. We want to continue to give more uh, space, have space to give more diapers. We want to continue to be able to do greater works than these uh, in the months and years to come and how we come out of this season will determine what we can do in the next season. Is that all right? Can I tell you the truth that it takes funds to be able to do this work? And so uh, if God moves upon you, I pray that you will consider giving uh, to Givelify, that you'll consider writing a check and sending it to the church um, P.O. box. I pray that you find a way to be able to be a blessing through our website, whatever God moves upon your heart to do. Uh, make sure that you give to God's work for God has not finished with us and God has not finished using us in the world. Amen. Amen. As we prepare in just a moment for the word of God, let us sing unto God a song of worship and praise. Uh, let us declare that because the Lord has been on our side every step of the way, we have made it thus far. If it had not been for the Lord, where would we be? Let us sing together. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, tell me where would we be? How many remember this? Oh, where would we be if it had not been? For the Lord on our side, tell me where would we be? I want to know, I need to know, where would we be? Taking it back. Oh, you kept my enemies away. You let the sun shine through the cloudy day. You kept us in the cradle. God has been faithful to God's people every step of the way. And no matter what we experience, we know uh, that no matter what the world does, no matter what we go through, we know that no matter what changes, what comes and goes, God is a sustainer. God is the joy and the strength of our life. God is our source. God is all that we need. And so we lift our hearts in total praise to God. We give God all the worship that God is due. If it had not been for the Lord, we don't know where we would be, where we would go, what we would make it. After through how we will be able to stand, but God has been faithful. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And because he is great, we can do great things. God has called us to walk in joy, walk in peace, walk in love, walk in victory, and not just for our sake, but as representatives of the kingdom of God, as representatives of what God has due. God has called us to have faith to know that we can transform the world through kingdom ethics, so we can transform the world by telling the truth and by loving. We can transform the world by standing for righteousness and justice. We can transform the world. God has called us on mission and for that, we are grateful. Uh, let's take a moment and sing just a little bit of this as we get ready for the word of God. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Come on, y'all, help me, help me out. Because he lives, all fear is gone. 
because we know who holds our future. This life is worth the living just because he lives. Y'all gotta help me. Y'all gotta help me. I'm not the best singer. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because we know in our hearts, we know who holds the future. Our life is worth the living just because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow because he lives. Come on, let's just sing it together. All fear, all fear is gone. Because I know oh, who holds my future. This life is worth the living just because he lives. I want to really have a conversation. I want to really be able to talk with the people of God from the word of God. And what I want to do is I want to open it up from the book of Acts. Of course, today is Pentecost Sunday. It's a Sunday where we acknowledge what many refer to as the birthday of the church. It's uh, that Sunday where the, the, the disciples of Jesus Christ, after the death and resurrection of the Lord, uh, they've been given instructions by Jesus to go uh, and to wait for him. And so they've waited. They've tarried uh, there in a room in Jerusalem waiting for the promise to come. The promise is the power of the Holy Spirit to descend. Now, of course, we know uh, from our reading earlier in John chapter 20 that Jesus has already breathed in his resurrected body onto uh, some of the apostles, and they have already received the Holy Spirit. But in this moment, something's about to happen. Another promise has, has happened, and the promise is that God does not just dwell among a certain group of people. And that's a blessing right there. Before I even get into my message and start preaching, I just am excited and want to praise God right there. God does not just deal with a few folks. And so the apostles have received it, but it's a promise that all will receive uh, who come into the kingdom, uh, the birth, uh, the new birth. Uh, uh, John the Baptist has alluded to it. Jesus has talked about it. This idea that the one who comes after uh, will do this, that there will be not only a baptism of water, but a baptism with fire, a baptism with the spirit. And Pentecost is the day where the promise is fulfilled. And that's what we're celebrating today. We're celebrating Pentecost. And so what I want to do is I want to turn our attention to Acts chapter 2. And in Acts chapter 2, I want to read just a few verses, verses 1 through 12, and it'll really lay the foundation as we prepare to think through this idea of Pentecost, the power of Pentecost. We're going to think through it now. I didn't say preach, I said think. We're going to talk and have conversation. Amen. And, and if the Lord say the same, we might have something to preach about for a few minutes at the end, but just give me uh, some time to talk to you today. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, it says, And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all together in one place. I'm reading the New International Version. And suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were seated. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest over each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying there in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And when they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? 
then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthenians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, both Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they answered one another, what do these things mean? What do these things mean? Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Spirit descends and gives utterance. And as all speak, the watching world and the listening crowd is able to hear in their own language. And at the end, the question is raised up. What does this all mean? What What, what is this? That's happening. On this Sunday, Pentecost, this day of celebration, I want to acknowledge that there is a shorter bridge from the first century to the 20th century than we may believe. I want to acknowledge that there is a shorter bridge, there is a shorter distance between uh, the story we see here in John chapter 20 and then in Acts chapter 2 and what we see in the story of our own lives today. There is not as much distance between the two as we may like to believe. So often when we think about those days there in the biblical text, we think about days that are separated from us greatly. But the reality is that there's a lot more overlap than we want to believe. If we think about it honestly and critically, we will see that when we as, when we sit down to study the early church and to study uh, the, the Jesus movement, there are some similarities between that day and this day that we need to understand if we're going to preach fully the gospel of Jesus Christ and the counsel it has for where we are right now. What do I mean by that? Let me, let me, let me break it down a little bit more. It is not true that the people in Jesus's day didn't know the pain we feel today. It, it is not true. It's a lie. Don't let anybody tell you that those who are following Jesus in that first generation or two of the church of the way, don't let anybody cause you to believe that those people did not feel the kind of anguish and pain and despair that many of us are feeling uh, today. I know you know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to leave the elephant unaddressed in the room. We are living today in the midst of moments that cause despair and difficulty uh, and and, and, and joylessness and pain in many hearts. Many of us last night and the night before we went to sleep and woke up to images of cities on fire. Many of us have spent the last two to three months worried about a disease, a virus that folks are fearing, are fearing is going to wipe out one or two percent of the world's population. We have spent the last three or four months in the midst of some fear and some uncertainty and some worration. We have had moments of sleeplessness. If we can be honest, I'm not talking to all of y'all because some of y'all faith is so strong that you never have any problems. But I'm going to tell you my reality. My reality is that I've had moments over the last three months where I've said, if you catch me wrong, I might not use the holy language that you hear in the pulpit. I'm going to tell you the truth. I've had moments as I've watched people killed in the street for no reason other than having the same shade of, 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 of flesh that I have. I've had some moments as I wondered about whether or not I've watched wipe down things enough that come into my house to keep my children from receiving a horrendous virus. I've had some moments as I've heard people sit around and pontificate about how people figure out how it is they can protest evil in the world and sit back respectably in their one million dollar homes and talk about people who don't have a pot or, or, or a window. I've had some moments where I've been in despair and frustrated. I, I cannot deal with the truth. I, I cannot sometimes find myself in myself the strength to be able to deal gracefully with the mess around us. If I can tell you the truth, I feel like James Baldwin. I'm angry right now. Turn off the turn off the camera if you came up in a tradition that said don't ever be angry. Turn turn off the camera. Turn off the camera if you are able to quote Psalms all day, every day, no matter what happens to you. I, I wouldn't raise like that. 
And so because of who I am, because I'm a human being and because I have not yet attained, as Paul said, I haven't gotten there like some of you preachers. I haven't gotten to the point where nothing worries me uh, yet. And so I've had some issues. I've had some moments. Can I, can I be honest? Where I've had to figure out, Lord, what is the sucker and what is the salvific word? What is the salve for your word that you are applying to my soul? What, what can I do to get myself in a place of peace and joy? Lord, I can't really deal well with the killings. I don't really deal well with the hypocrisy. I, I don't. I just, I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't really deal well with the economic system that crushes black people down to dust and then gets angry when they start to uprise. I can't deal. I can't deal with it. But as I've read my Bible the last few days, I found that there is not as much distance between today and Jesus's day as we like to believe. We sometimes wonder if God understands, if Jesus sees, if the world really recognizes, if the spirit, if the if, if those who are there watching us, that great crowd of witnesses has any understanding of where we are. And can I tell you, they've been down the same road we've been down. We sometimes look at the Christian tradition and particularly the first couple generations of the Christian church over the lens of years. And so we think because of the historical distance, we think of a beautiful scenery. We think of all the good stuff. We think of how God gives daily to those who are being saved. We think of how the word of God goes throughout the world. We think of how God expands God's kingdom, but we sometimes forget that the church was born in a crucible similar to the one in which we rest. We sometimes forget that blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. We sometimes forget that Jesus didn't just go up unassailed, but that Jesus' body was broken before he ascended. We sometimes forget that we follow one who was murdered by the state as a minoritized body in the midst of an occupied land under a foreign power who was killed violently and in public to make sure that anybody who dared follow him knew that they would suffer a similar fate the next time. He, he was killed in such a way that he was called a curse. He was killed in such a way that the world saw him as a byline, an embarrassment. He was killed in such a way uh, that anybody who was another Jew uh, from that area who had the same ideas would think two or three or four times before they decided to go into the temple and turn over any tables. They would think twice before they decided to undo the laws. They would think three or four times before they went against the, the social mores of the day he was killed as an example so that people like him would remember their place. Jesus died at Calvary on the cross. And the crucifixion death was one of the worst deaths the Romans could devise. It was a death that was designed to strip all dignity from the person experiencing it. It was a death designed to say to those around, don't end up like this fool. It was a death that was excruciating. As Jesus bled out in the heat of the day, Jesus died through asphyxiation. Jesus is on a cross where his feet and his arms, his hands have nails in him and he's on a cross beam and he's trying his best to breathe. He, he, he's trying his, breast, his best to get breath into his body in order to be able to speak from the cross. Every time he says one of those seven last words that we love to talk about, he literally has to lift his body up so he can get enough air to breathe. The way you die when you're crucified is your lungs burn, your lungs lose air, you asphyxiate to death. Blood mixes with the oxygen. You slowly choke to death on your own blood. Jesus was lynched outside the city gate. That, that's the way Jesus That We sometimes think there's more distance between that day and this day, but can I tell you the truth? Jesus knew all about our troubles. Jesus knew every problem we face. 
And it wasn't just Jesus because Jesus dies and then he goes down into the tomb and he's resurrected. And, 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 and we get these moments here in John chapter 20 and then in Acts 1 and 2 when you see these people who are the followers of Jesus are trying to figure out what to do in the aftermath of this public lynching of Jesus. They're trying to figure out what to do. They're afraid. They're so afraid that they are not need in a cave locked behind uh, closed doors trying to figure out where to go from here. And we have two texts we've read today. One of the texts, John chapter 20, what happens is that Jesus in his body, glorified body, comes in through the walls and gets into the place where they've locked themselves away from hope and away from the world. And he says to them, peace, peace, I give to you. And he breathes on them and they receive the Holy Spirit. And that's encouraging. That's a, that's encouraging that Jesus breathes on them. The one who was asphyxiated to death, he breathes on them. Jesus has gotten his second wind, y'all. And he gives us our second wind to be able to go on. And not only does he give us the wind to be able to continue to breathe and go on and to continue to speak the truth, but he gives us peace along with it. Jesus bequeaths to his apostles not only wind to be able to stand and breathe and speak the truth, but he also gives them peace for the journey. That's what happens in John 20. But I'm so glad that Jesus isn't foolish enough to stop with the apostles. Hmm. Say I'm not going to preach. I'm just going to talk a little bit. Y'all bear with me. Jesus doesn't finish with the apostles in John 20, but rather it goes on. And those who have been his apostles, his followers, they're told to go to Jerusalem and to wait, to tarry there for the promise that will, that will come. The promise uh, is going to be fulfilled more widely. Yes, some of God's followers, some of Jesus's followers, some of the first Christians of the way, some of those first folks who really at this point are not even considered Christians or just considered people of the way, Jewish believers who have come to follow and put their faith in Jesus. Some of them have received the Holy Spirit, but it's very few. There's still a very small minority of people who have been empowered in that way and who have received breath in that way. And so uh, they go down to Jerusalem and there's a great gathering. It's a holy high day. It's time for all the Jews from the area to come and to take a pilgrimage there to Jerusalem. They're in the midst of holy seasons. And so uh, the, the, the population of the area has swelled greatly. All of these people are there and there are faithful Jews from all across the world there at the day of Pentecost. And they're together all in one place. There's unity of the believers. Everybody's together, but they're together in the midst of gross darkness. They're together on the hills of of their master being publicly murdered. They're, they're there on the heels of Jesus being asphyxiated to death out in public. They're there on the heels of a public lynching of their Lord. They have all gathered together in one place and they're on one accord. And the scripture says that while they are there waiting for the promise to be fulfilled, suddenly a sound comes in and it's like the violent blowing of a wind. It comes down from heaven and it fills the entire house where the people of God are sitting. They are all together and the wind comes in and it fills the place and this blowing sound that sounds like wind, uh, it causes them to understand that something is happening. It's a, it's a pregnant moment. It's a moment whereby the people who have been dogged and dragged all of their life, it's a moment wherein people who have seen themselves beaten down and overlooked and discarded all of their lives, it's a moment wherein a minoritized group of people who have seen their master destroyed have gathered together in unity and in unison, and they're all together in one place, and when they're there, a commotion starts up. When sounds happen, it, it, it's almost like there's a hurricane in the house. Can you imagine the sound of wind blowing all around you? It's, it, it's like you're in the middle of a hurricane and, and, and scripture says they begin to see something. They, they've already heard a sound and now they begin to see a vision. They saw what seemed to them little tongues of a fire. I, I don't know if you've ever seen uh, a fire up close, if you've ever uh, uh, made a good fire at a campsite, or if you've been to a good barbecue and seen a good fire going. Uh, I think about the individual flames that lick up from the fire. It, it's as if individual flames, tongues of fire are over their heads. Every person who's there, it's as if there's a, there's a, there's, a, there's an individual uh, flame from the fire divides and goes among and above the heads of each of the people, and they see them, and they rest on them and all of them are filled with the Holy Spirit. 
There, 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 there are little fires everywhere. Every person has a fire over their head. Every person's um, head, every person's space above them is set ablaze. There's fire everywhere. And the spirit of God descends when the people are together, grieving, fearful, locked away in a room. And the spirit of God comes down and fire descends. And everybody is filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and something happens that changes the world. Scripture says in this moment, they all begin to speak in other tongues as the spirit gives utterance. That, that's that King James I grew up with. Uh, and NIV says enables them. They, they begin to speak in different, diverse, in different other tongues as the spirit of God enables them to do so. Now, now at this moment, it, 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 by no coincidence, there's a crowd that's gathering. There, there are all kinds of people. Something uh, is happening culturally. There, there's a festival that's happening culturally that means that, that the population of the city is swelling. There are all these outsiders, all these people from all over the world who are there together in Jerusalem in the holy city, and they are God-fearing people. They are people who love God. They are people who know God's law. They are Jewish people with a good, strong background, but they're from every nation under heaven. God has made it so that everybody sees at at the same time, it's, it's powerful because this is not the 21st century. There, there is no Zoom. There, there is no internet. There is no Google. It's not a time when you regularly have people able to communicate across the continent. It's not a time where the whole of the world comes together and watches one thing or experiences one thing. The world is greatly divided in this time. Our nations are divided. Tongues are divided. Cultures are divided. We don't have a lot of international travel. The world has not been uh, connected in the way that it has in this century by fiber optic cable and by international uh, travel and by jet planes and 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 and, 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 and cruise ships, uh, folks are divided. But but God puts a star on the map on Jerusalem, and God through a tradition whereby people of the Jewish faith come from all over the world, God sets it up so that even though the world is greatly divided, in this moment everybody sees and hears the same thing. People from all over the world, the Bible goes out of the way to list the table of nations, all kind of people from all over the world, people from the East, people from Africa, people are from nations that are known to be nations from which slaves are taken, people People that are from places uh, that are known to be uh, places that are that are rich and that have fertile soil. People from places that are known to have good uh, philosophy and those who are not philosophically uh, strong. Those who are laborers. Those who are who are, who are who are who are educated. Those who are superior socially. Those who come from a whole bunch of money. Those from powerful kingdoms and from tiny nations all over the world. People gather around at Jerusalem. God puts a spotlight on the city and God brings everybody there. And at that moment when the whole city is teeming with people, the spirit descends and the people start speaking. And the people speaking in tongues is miraculous, but it's not the point. The people who are speaking, that, 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 that's something that, that's miraculous, but it's not what gets uh, the real attention in the text. What gets real attention in the text is not those who are speaking, but the fact that people are able to hear. They're telling the story of of Jesus. We know that later on because in just a few seconds, uh, when he asks, what does this mean? Uh, uh, the preacher of the hour is going to get up. He always uses every opportunity to tell the truth of Jesus and he's going to tell the story of Jesus, the one who was crucified, the one who was killed. You remember the one I talked about, the brown skinned man uh, from that area who was murdered, uh, who was publicly lynched, the one who was killed, who was asphyxiated out in public, the one who lost his life because he dared to speak the truth, the one who finds himself on a cross on the rock side of the government, that man, that brother, he they stand up and they preach his truth. They preach his story. They preach that he died, but that God has raised him from the dead. That's the story they preach. And that story is heard by all. The spirit of God opens up ears such that people who previously could not hear the truth are able to hear it. 
God sets up so that everybody is together and God breaks down the barriers of language and culture. God makes it so nobody can deny the truth any longer. God says everybody's going to hear about this man, Jesus. Everybody's going to know the truth of this gospel. It's time for the Parthenians, for the Mesopotamians, for the Cappadocians, for the Asians, for the Phrygians. I want everybody to hear. It's not just a local story, just for those who are there in Jerusalem, just for those who knew him from Nazareth, the whole world needs to know what's going on. God puts a stamp there on Jerusalem and brings the whole world into this place and tells the truth and makes it so nobody can plug up their ears. Everybody has to know what's going down. The Spirit's purpose in the text is to make sure nobody can ignore what happened in Jesus. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love this story. I love this idea that God is so concerned with the whole world knowing the truth that God undoes what was done in Genesis. God undoes the division of language and God makes it so that no matter who you are, you are without excuse. On Pentecost Sunday, Holy Spirit comes down and empowers the people of God to spread the message everywhere and every tongue to everyone that God has raised from the dead, Jesus. The Pentecost moment becomes a moment when the people of God are empowered to speak in such a way that no one can any longer ignore it based on social and geographic location. The Spirit makes the message intelligible to all nations. No one can say we didn't know any longer. Because of what happens at Jerusalem, because of what happens at Calvary, but because of what happens in the upper room, people are able to know all over the world the truth and they are made accountable to it because fires show up, because the spirit breaks down divisions. Because the whole world can now see it for themselves. Listen, they didn't have cell phone cameras, but the Holy Spirit brought everybody there to Jerusalem. They, they didn't have Google Translate to make sure everybody could see what was going down in Cincinnati, see what was happening in Sanford, could understand what took place in Dallas, could recognize what happened at Staten Island. But the Holy Spirit did the work and made sure that everybody was on one accord. Everybody needs to know that everything is going down. Everybody needs to understand that the fire is here and the spirit is here and when the spirit comes the spirit's purpose is to make sure that nobody is left out of the narrative the apostles have already received the holy ghost john chapter 20 but Acts chapter 2 god gives light and god gives legs to the theological reality that god does not play favorites and God wants to make sure that all who are willing to hear the truth are able to receive it. And so the spirit comes down and it empowers it. It strengthens. In John chapter 20, it comes as breath to re-enliven those who are followers of the one who's been choked out on a cross. It, it comes as, 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 as fire, a purifying fire to represent the light and the purity of God to those who are fearful and locked away for fear of the Jewish leaders. It, it comes in various ways, in various generations. But can I say something? When the Spirit shows up, we know the Spirit is here because the Spirit begins to destroy barriers and the Spirit begins to leap over walls and the Spirit begins to bring all people together and the Spirit begins to tell inconvenient truths. When the Spirit is on the scene, when a Pentecost moment happens, Pentecost is not about shouting for power. Pentecost is about the power to change the world and to make sure that every single person out in the street can hear God's truth. The gospel is not just for those who are in the upper room. That's in the text. John chapter 20, Jesus breaks in and makes sure that this group of people, including Doubting Thomas, who's fearful, including all of the apostles uh, who don't uh, completely understand what he's doing, he, he breaks in to make sure that they uh, receive the breath. But then in Acts chapter 2, instead of breaking into the room, he breaks out of the room. I love the juxtaposition. In John chapter 20, uh, Jesus breaks into the room. 
because he wants to get into the folks who represent the church. Acts chapter two, he breaks out of the room because he wants the church to know there's more to the church than just being in that one inner room. He wants the church to understand that we've got more work to do and we've got more ground to cover. He wants the church to understand that the work is not in the room. The work is out in the world, in the street. And so isn't it something that fire uh, becomes uh, uh, their imagination? Fire consumes every one of their hearts and, and is over their heads and it causes them to go out into the street and to speak. Can I tell you that when the Holy Spirit truly descends, we ought to be sent to the streets speaking truth to power. When the Holy Spirit truly descends, it ought not just make us shout and huck a buck and jump up and down in the church. It ought to send us to the streets saying something that everybody can understand. We ought to speak in such a way that the whole world is placed on notice. When the Spirit shows up, the Word of God ought to go forth with conviction and power. John chapter 20. Jesus is encouraging the apostles. Acts chapter 2, Spirit is commissioning the church. I love it. Many of us have camped out in John 20 so long that we've neglected an Acts 2 kind of ministry. We spent so much time enjoying being in the inner room. Jesus there. Jesus speaking word of blessing experiential healing. Remember, this is where Thomas says, I won't believe that it's Jesus until I can what see scars and I can put my hands in the scar. It, it, uh, John chapter 20, the people of God are being catered to. The people of God are expecting Jesus to show up and to show up. The, the people are expecting miraculous proofs. The people of God, those who ought to be leaders, who ought to tell the truth and who ought to live the truth, they are so fearful and so and so afraid of the truth that they are just waiting back, hoping that God will do something to prove to them that God is there. But in, in, in Acts chapter 2, God is past coddling. God is past uh, proving God, God has passed those moments and the Holy Spirit now is saying my desire is not just to build up those on the inside my desire is to give a word on the inside that will cause those on the inside to march on the outside so the whole world is changed Pentecost is not just about tongues Pentecost is about transformation little fires descend everywhere And the followers of the persecuted Jew, the followers of the lynch man, they go from place to place declaring the truth of the one who has come and who was killed and who lives again. The message of Pentecost is that no matter how much the world tries to kill God's broken messengers, the message of Pentecost is that no matter how much the world tries to beat down the hope of the broken and the minoritized, the, the promise of Pentecost is that no matter how much the world tries to choke the peace and the hope and the joy out of broken people and brown people and poor people and unseen people, no matter how much the world tries to say, I'll make an example out of you and I'll make sure that we get away scot-free, Pentecost is a reminder that the Spirit of God is still giving a second wind to those who cannot breathe and the Pentecost moment is a reminder that the fire of God and the power of God still shows up amongst those who are rejected and hated and left up God has a way of showing up in broken places for broken people and doing what nobody thinks is possible in the beginning. And so on this Pentecost Sunday, my encouragement is if you feel like you can't make it another day. If you wake up this morning and you get ready for worship and instead of having joy, you have trepidation. If you wake up this morning and you're ready to look at the, the, the stream of church and instead you see a stream of buildings burning in the next major city. If you wake up this morning and you don't know uh, what you're going to do with uh, the fear you have in your heart about COVID-19 and the fact that it seems to be spreading rather than going away. 
If you wake up this morning and all you can muster is fear and, and uncertainty, if all you see is darkness and lack, if you don't know how to hold on, let Pentecost be a reminder that our God never gives up on the broken, that our God always gives a second wind to the breathless, and that our God is always empowering the words and the work of those whom the world counts out, but whom God counts on. I'm so glad to know that even though we have very little to show for our work sometimes, that even if we are the least and the last, that even when it seems as if we have been overlooked and forgotten, that even if you cannot find hope and help anywhere, that even if you find more pain than you find promise, that even if you're dealing with more hurt than you're dealing with help, God is still with us. The reality is that no matter what we see, no matter what we experience, the Spirit of God is still at work and God's Spirit moves and breathes on those who have been left alone and left out and let down and overlooked. God still has work for us to do. The reality is Pentecost reminds us that we are still eligible even if we were left out of the first round draft. You still are eligible even if nobody knows your name. You may not have been Peter. You may not have been Paul. You may not have been Philip. You may not have been Bartholomew. We may not all have money. We may not all have notoriety, but God knows us by name. And just because you didn't get your second win in John 20 doesn't mean Acts 2 is not going to come back and scoop you up. Sometimes we fear that if we have not figured it all out in one chapter, the whole book is over. But I come to tell you, the Spirit of God is still reaching down and lifting up. I come to tell you, the fire of God is still burning up. I come to tell you, the wind of God is still blowing at your back. God is still in the business of showing up when it seems like there is no help anywhere. No matter what it feels like, God is still on our side. I come to tell you on this Pentecost, he's still blowing, he's still burning, he's still moving. God is still at work. It's not done. It's not over. He's not giving up. Somebody in the sound of my voice needs to be reminded that no matter how many fires you see, that no matter how much violence we experience, that no matter how many times we lose our hope, God is still there restoring and repairing. God has never given up on us and God never will. The doors of the church are open. There may be one on the sound of my voice who needs to give your life to Jesus or there may be one who needs special prayer. There may be one who wants to join this church, to join the community congregational church and receive uh, a fellowship together, uh, who wants to start this journey of discipleship with us. I, I pray that you don't miss this opportunity. Don't, don't turn a deaf ear. Don't turn a blind eye. If God is calling you to give your life to Jesus today, you can do it right where you are virtually on this uh, uh, streaming. Uh, if God has called you to join this church, guess what? You can start the process right where you are. You don't have to wait until COVID-19 goes away. You don't have to worry until we wait until we can get into a sanctuary and you can walk down the aisle and shake my hand. You can give your life to Jesus today. You can join God's church today. There is uh, no boundary that the spirit won't leap over. The beauty of Pentecost is that every boundary has been broken. And so you can give your life to God and give your hand to the church right now. Uh, if you desire to give your heart to Jesus, repeat after me in this prayer. God, I know that you are my creator. I believe that God is the creator and the father of Jesus. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I believe that Jesus rose for my sins. I believe that it was God who raised Jesus from the dead. I accept the free gift of salvation in Jesus' name. 
If you've prayed that prayer with me, you have begun the process of discipleship with the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what I want you to do. Before you even close this stream down good, I want you to go get a Bible. If you don't have a Bible, I want you to get on your iPad, get on your cell phone, get on your computer and make sure you go somewhere and look up Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10, one chapter of the Bible. I want you today to read Romans chapter 10, read the entirety of that chapter. It will help you to know that according to the word of God, you have begun the process now by confessing and declaring these things that you are a child of God and you are saved by grace. And now we begin the process of becoming a disciple of the Lord. What does that mean? That means that even once we uh, receive salvation, we still have to become disciples and followers of Jesus. And so this is what I want you to do. I want you to take some time this week and I want you to read your Bible. Start with the book of John. Go through and start reading the book of John and getting familiar with what Jesus did for you and for me. I also I want you to reach out to me. I want you to make time today to reach out to me. Inbox me here on the Facebook page or on the YouTube channel. Uh, inbox me personally on my Facebook. Uh, if you see I'm connected to the church, you can see my name all over the church page. You can reach out to me. Uh, personally, you can email me at ray underscore speller at yahoo.com. Uh, you can also send mail to the church 3481 South Court Street, Montgomery, Alabama 36105. You can send me uh, something that tells me that you you've given your heart to Jesus. You can send prayer requests. You can also email prayer requests. I find a way to let me know that you have made this decision. Uh, you can go to our website even. There's a contact us page. If you go ahead and put a note in the contact us page, that'll generate an email that comes directly to me. All these are ways you can let me know I've accepted Jesus Christ and we will begin the process of walking with you and encouraging you all the days of your life. Secondly, maybe you want to join this church. Maybe you're already a disciple of Jesus. You already know the Lord but you need a Bible-believing church, a church that preaches the love of God, but also the truth of God, I ask you, consider joining with us. If you desire to join with us, this is what I want you to do. I want you to make sure that you reach out to us on our Contact Us link on our church website, which is www.cccmontgomery.org. I put in a message there at the Contact Us site. It'll generate an email that comes to me that I can reply to. Uh, if you also want to do it another way, you can uh, inbox us here at CC. CC Montgomery on Facebook or on YouTube, whichever way you're watching this video, just send us an inbox. You can even put a comment on the video. If you don't know how to inbox, just find a way to let us know that you've either given your heart to Jesus or you want to join the church. And we'll begin the process of walking with you for the rest of this life with Jesus. We want to make sure you have everything you need and you know God's love through the body of Christ. I am so excited that the Lord has spoken to us. And I'm going to tell you, I feel lighter than I did before I started this service today. I'm so glad that the word of God has what we need. I pray that everybody who's heard this word today would be strengthened, challenged, and encouraged that we will go forth telling the truth and living the love of Jesus Christ. The challenge today, now that we've heard the word, is that we'll go to God now in prayer, asking God for wisdom and clarity as we go and transform the world, as transformed people. Let us pray out together. God, I thank you for the power of transformation. I thank you for your spirit. I pray, I thank you, God, that you have allowed us, God, through the fire and the wind of the Holy Spirit to be transformed and renewed. Lord, allow us to be transforming agents in the world. God, some of us have a call to pray and intercede, God, for governmental leaders and to pray and intercede, God, for those who are up against uh, abuse, God, and to pray for those, God, who have experienced discrimination, God. Some of us are called to pray, God, for justice to reign in our nation. And some of us, God, are called to protest, God. Some of us are called to go out into the street and protest and tell the truth. Some of us are called to declare the truth on social media. Some of us are called to declare the truth, God, in the state house. Some of us are called to take political office. Some of us, God, are called to be teachers, to teach the next generation the truth. Some of us are called to preach God. Gospel. God, whatever we're called to do, let us hear you and let us faithfully discharge the duties of a soldier of Jesus Christ. God, help us to hear you clearly as you speak. Allow the miracle of Pentecost to be recreated in our lives so that when we listen, we don't just listen to argue. Let us hear. Let, let, let us have the gift of interpretation of tongues. Let, let us be able to hear the truth behind what we hear. When we speak, let us speak words seasoned with grace and truth. Teach us, God, to be 
world changers. God, we need your help and we need your hope in this day. And God, we commit that no matter what comes and what goes, we will always seek your face and your kingdom. And we will submit to your leadership as you give us wisdom all the days of our lives. All these things we pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the precious Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And amen. God bless you. God keep you. May you be encouraged for the rest of this day and this week. And as you go forth into the rest of this day, no matter what comes, no matter what goes, don't let anybody or anything steal your joy. God bless you. And I'll see you next time.